So today we're going to be talking about pillow basalts. Now, you're probably wondering what does that mean? Well, first let's talk about what pillow basalts are and how they formed. By definition, they are lava that has solidified underwater, which has a characteristic structure comprising of a series of close-fitting pillow-shaped masses. As lava erupts on the ocean floor, its outer surface cools and solidifies immediately. Within a fraction of a second, a frozen glassy skin is formed that surrounds the hot lava inside. Continued pressure of lava pushing from the inside causes the pillow to expand and stretch like a water balloon. New pillows form when hot lava bursts through the chilled skin of a previous pillow. Pillow sizes can range from one foot in diameter to almost 10 feet long. Ancient pillows can be distinguished by their shape and size of the crystals. We know that silica content affects how the lava will flow. The more silica means that, that the lava will flow slower or more viscous. If the lava is moving slower, it causes larger pillows to be formed. Now, because of the outside cools quickly, only small crystals are able to form. On the other hand, inside cools slow, so large coarse grain crystals are created. So, where on earth is this found? Well, mainly pillows are forming at ocean ridges, especially fast spreading centers. But that's not the only place they're forming. They have been seen at hotspot volcano chains and underneath glaciers that overlie volcanoes. Now you may be saying to yourself, there are none of these things even close to Wisconsin or Minnesota. Yes, that's true, currently, but that wasn't the case 2.7 billion years ago. Back then, our home was quite different than it is today. For instance, instead of Lake Superior, there was an ocean, and in the middle of that ocean, there was a mid-ocean ridge in which pillows were forming. It is thought that some of Minnesota's um, basaltic lavas cooled at depths as great as a thousand meters. The basalt that was laid down created a sort of platform for andesite and rhyolite rocks to be produced, which in turn build up to a volcano and its explosive center. After this, the volcano goes through a process of erosion and deposition. Erosion was especially occurring when the piles grew above sea level. Sediment was carried away through turbidity currents as time continued on. The land began to subside while granitic intrusions were occurring all around. This resulted in layers to be folded in a way that were nearly vertical instead of horizontal. When the granite intruded on the base of the pillow basalt, its heat and pressure caused the basalt to be metamorphosed into greenstone. We call it greenstone because minerals found in it give it a greenish color. The closer to the granitic intrusions, the more metamorphosed and darker the greenstones are. Within the greenstones, andesitic tufts and brushes and other fragmental materials may form from explosive type of eruption caused by expanding gases in the magma. Regionally, we can see evidence of greenstone belts in between granite or gneiss. Nice. This formation is important to the Wisconsin-Minnesota area because it confirms the presence of large bodies of water on the Earth's surface during the Archean Age. Chemical studies of the volcanic rock in the greenstone belts show that they're almost identical to modern ocean floor basalts. Overall, it gives us a small look into the ancient plate tectonics and how Earth's surface used to be like. Because of how the pillows form, geologists can determine the direction of lava flow, which is useful after years of metamorphism. Today, pillow basalts still play an important role. Because they're an essential building block, new land is being created. One example of this is the Hawaiian Islands. Those islands were formed by a hot spot eruption and build up by pillow lava. As the plate moves across the hotspot, new islands are, were forming. Presently, there is a new island be, beginning to form to add to the current chain. Overall, basalt is a very important aspect, not only for land building, but serves as a historical marker for future geologists.